The pagans found transcendence through the joining of male and female. People found God through sex. In paganism, women were worshipped as a route to heaven. But the modern church has a monopoly on that in salvation through Jesus Christ. And he who keeps the keys to heaven rules the world. Women then are a huge threat to the church. Catholic Inquisition soon publishes what may be the most blood-soaked book in human history. The Malaeus Maleficarum. The Witch's Hammer. It instructed the clergy on how to locate, torture and kill all free-thinking women. Fifty thousand women are captured, burned alive at the stake. Oh, at least that. Some say millions. Imagine then, Robert, that Christ's throne might live on in a female child. You asked what would be worth killing for. Witness the greatest cover-up in human history. This is the secret the Priory of Siam has defended for over twenty centuries. They are the guardians of the royal bloodline. Keepers of the proof of our true past. They are the protectors of the living descendants of Jesus Christ. And Mary Magdalene. recent of the solar messiahs. First of all, the birth sequence is completely astrological. The star in the east is Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky, which on December 24th aligns with the three brightest stars in Orion's belt. These three bright stars in Orion's belt are called today what they were called in ancient times the three kings. And the three kings and the brightest star, Sirius, all point to the place of the sunrise on December 25th. This is why the three kings follow the star in the east, in order to locate the sunrise, the birth of the sun. The Virgin Mary is the constellation Virgo, also known as Virgo the Virgin. Now let me show you the grail. Now, mademoiselle, where is Jesus sitting? In the middle. Good. Well, that's a bit strange, isn't it? Considering both the Bible and standard grail legends celebrate this moment as the definitive arrival of the Holy Grail. Hmm. Now, Robert, you could be of help to us. If you'd be so kind as to show us the symbols for man and woman. This is the original icon for male. It's a rudimentary phallus. Quite to the point. Yes, indeed. This is known as the blade. It represents aggression and manhood. It's a symbol still used today in modern military uniform. Yes, the more penises you have, the higher your rank boys will be boys. Now, as you would imagine, the female symbol 
This is exact opposite. This is called the chalice. And the chalice resembles a cup or vessel, or more importantly, the shape of a woman's womb. No, the grail has never been a cup. It is quite literally this ancient symbol of womanhood. And in this case, a woman who carried a secret so powerful that if revealed, it would devastate the very foundations of Christianity. Wait, please. You're saying the Holy Grail is a person? A woman? They're all men. Are oh, they? What about that figure on the right hand of our Lord, seated in the place of honor? Hmm? Flowing red hair, folded feminine hands, hint of a bosom. Huh? A quiet. It's called Scotoma. The mind sees what it chooses to see. Who is she? Yeah, that's Mary Magdalene. The prostitute? She was no such thing. Smeared by the church in 591 and a dominant death. Mary Magdalene was Jesus' wife. Notice how Jesus and Mary are clothed. Mirror images of each other. The mind sees what it chooses to see. And venturing into the even more bizarre, uh, notice how Jesus and Mary appear to be joined at the hip and are leaning away from each other as if to create a shape in the negative space between them. Leonardo gives us the chalice. Yes, oh, and Robert, uh, notice what happens when these two figures <laughs> change position. Just because Da Vinci painted it doesn't make it true. No, but history, she does make it true. Now, listen to this. It's from the Gospel according to Philip. Philip? Yes, it was rejected at the Council of Nicaea, along with any other Gospels that made Jesus appear human and not divine. And the companion of the Saviour is Mary Magdalene. Christ loved her more than all the disciples and used to kiss her. But this on the... says nothing of marriage. Well, actually, um, Robert. Actually, in those days, the word companion literally meant spouse. And this is from the Gospel of Mary Magdalene herself. She wrote the Gospel? She may have. Robert, will you fight fair? She may have. And Peter said, did he prefer her to us? And Levi answered, Peter, I see you contending against a woman like an adversary. If the Savior made her worthy, who are you indeed to reject her? And then my dear Jesus goes on to tell Mary Magdalene that it's up to her to continue his church. Mary Magdalene, not Peter. The church was supposed to be carried on by a woman.